sub stop, Philadelphia PA Shots so loud, you would think it was a club spot African Americans, although we all over the web We the hood librarians, we ship the prisons too We reach out and deliver to those that's bitten too But it's more than a bookstore You want it, we got it, mixtapes, DVDs and culture products Black and Nobel, got our hands in a lot of projects We rock them all to come build, the energy is positive And remember of the team, is awake and conscious Come through and experience this place of knowledge They say they'll put it in a book If they wanna hide it from us But we got them books so you can buy it from us Something to read while you on a train or riding a bus Get your read on, food for thought, get your eat on Black and Nobel I buy my books at Black and Nobel Black and Nobel I buy my books at Black and Nobel Black and Nobel I buy my books at Black and Nobel Black and Nobel I buy my books at Black and Nobel I had a dream like Martin, so they tried to X me out, like Malcolm. I traveled a thousand miles like Rosa without parking. I run with some generals, so like Garvey, they want to mark us. Langston, my hues are vivid, the poetry of an artist. I'm Huey Newton with the Panthers, I'm riding regardless. Until my body turned back to ash like Arthur. So many thoughts to say. God bless the child that got his own, like Billy on a holiday. It's trying to make my vision picture perfect like Sidney Portier. It got me light on my feet like Cab Callaway. Of course they say, I hear the angels in the sky calling me. They say we flow like Sojourner to Truth. I'm a red fox running through the Dianetics at Alex Haley just trying to find my roots. Harriet Tubman underground trying to set my troops loose. Silence of slavery, I'm Nat Turner when I speak in the booth. My vision clear, but I still can't see what's the use. Surrounded by the muddy waters. They want my game over like Rich Porter. Telling me I'm nuts like George Washington Carver, but like third that I'm a marshal, bridging the states from the Trenton Makes to the Betsy Rosses. Thoughts of Earl Manigo got me balling harder and harder. We starving to rap Jackie Robinson. Every hit we running farther and farther. Yeah, that's why they love us. We the movers moving the movement. The present day Frederick Douglass. More than our losses since the moment we lost them. Like Susie Melvin, a rose that was blown away on the road to the struggle. More than our losses since the moment I lost her. To the day I'm blown away on the road to my mother. I Well, in fact, I know when you study us in organized bodies across the gov or across this land and the struggles that we've been in, law is already always involved. There's been an unfortunate side is that many of the leaders have not taught law. And so therefore we've made uh, emotional arguments with no effects. You know what I mean? In other words, we complain but got no boot behind it. Law gives you that boot to start bringing some remedy. Brother Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum, family. You know, it's always a pleasure just to be up here with you. You know, it's a pleasure. Relax. You can bring your chair up for one mic. If you here, got you down. I'm going to sit back here. This is not my class. I'm just a guest. So, alhamdulillah. My name is Muhammad Bashir. I'm an attorney out of New Jersey. I'm the author of the book Raw Law, another guide to criminal justice, which is on sale over here. And uh, can we have a can I'm we just somewhat bring one of the please? Yes. Being here, I thank you all for even having me here. I really Hold on for a minute, brother. Uh, no, no, you ain't rushing, we ain't letting <laughs> you sit down. And, and, and tell them what your next stop is going to be as well. Oh, okay, okay. Um, I'm speaking at the Congress Congressional Black Caucus on the 22nd because I got a funny feeling the Black Caucus needs to hear some of the truth about what it is they've been doing for the last. Uh, they're only 50 years old, so mm -hmm. maybe they're babies in this whole political mm -hmm. game, but I don't, you know, so maybe we need to wake them up. Um, but that's on the 22nd, I'll be at the Black Caucus down in D.C. And uh, first of the year, book two will be out, inshallah, it's called the Raw Law 2, The Making of a Criminal, how it is that they go about turning what you thought was regular citizenship, regular participation in the society or any society into crime and how you have bit into the idea that they have control over what it is and how they can define you and you're no longer defining yourself. Hard cover, soft cover. So you got it both ways. Give the brother a hand. Oh, really? Good Thank work you. too. Um, we, have, we have a good supply on the, on the desk up the front because we had them back here, but we got a good supply up there so anybody wants to pick them up. And I'm gonna keep these up here so you want to pick them up, you got them. Um, I'll be calling you up again too, brother. And also, it's a good, um, I think it'd be good when you go down there and talk to the brothers, 
because I know there is a degree also of dishonesty amongst them. And that dishonesty is um, that they know the real politics of this country. They're going to pay the price for not telling the truth, too. And I understand part of it is intimidation, you know, but it is what it is. And you coming from where you're coming from, true. Um, my feeling is they'll accommodate you and pretend that they're totally sincerely receiving you when they're going to play the game until they know that you know what's really up. And we're not just talking about process of law or the form of law, you know, because most of the time they're talking about process of law. But the form of law, they avoid. And the reason they avoid it because most of them, number one, are Masons and Eastern Stars. And in secret, got a feds. You know, just like all the other rules. And are very aware that they're standing on Morocco. And they know exactly why the president speaks under that bird and does not speak under that pyramid. And they know that they're standing on a Moroccan empire. This is what I suggest because they're going to play dumb. Now I know I'm projecting this early, but I already know the game. So, you know, it's like this, when a brother steps, you know, on behalf of us, because he's stepping on behalf of us, as soon as a brother come true with the honor and integrity, he's stepping on behalf of the people. And I already know they're going to downplay it, because most of them's compromised. And again, like I said, there's another reason why I put the treaty book and the Constitution book together because I've been arguing for 30 years and mostly it's sort of like when you when you're around uh, erudite scholars who are really trying to help the people you don't have any debate it, there's no debate however you have others who also know that won't come out with it because they have to make other steps they got to move in other directions that create discomfort in other words, you got to rock the boat. Truth rocks the boat. And so this is a, 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 another reason why I um, put the treaty book and the Constitution book together. And also, because of the dispute and because of the hidden history and, of course, the Masonic secrets, you've got to kind of drop some of the Masonic secrets in order to give the common people a view into what really is up, because they really don't know. You know, and even with this information has much to do with why they killed Malcolm, because he found out. And it's not that it's not a secret, because this is part of the supreme wisdom. It's just that the average brothers don't get it. You know, now I was a sister minister in the nation years ago. And those who are in the circles know, you know, Muhammad Ali is a personal friend of mine. You know, I got pictures of him holding my baby on the porch. Joe Tex and all the brothers, you know. And I was under Harrison when Jeremiah was around the corner. You know, so I'm... I know that a lot of people know, but they, it's sort of like you get caught in this thing when your family, sometimes you know some people know some things and you don't want to rock the boat. However, Il Malik was, character was assassinated uh, wrongfully because the same thing he knew, everybody else knew. That was in leadership, not followers, leadership, you know. And then all the so-called, so-called black leaders knew, anybody with 32, 33 degrees masonry all knew, because it's all the same thing, because masonry is only Islam going underground. Do you understand? And the reason it is, and again, this is redundant, but, when, but we've also, um, just like we go into the documents of American history, George Washington papers, all of their papers, etc. And over the years, those of you who have been studying already know that um, the majority of the, of the um, European males in the con uh, Continental Congress, you know, were Masons. And you already know that they came under the protection of Muhammad ibn Abdullah, Sultan of Morocco, with the establishment of this government. And the Congress knows that, but they won't teach that because then that means all the history books and all the schools got to be trashed. Because the people here don't know their tie to this country. And that's where it gets uncomfortable, which is also why they will always refer to George Washington as the first president in order to hide the real history. And so the real law is based in the treaty 
know, peace and friendship between Morocco, which is the empire that was overthrown under the Treaty of Verona of Pope Innocent III and the establishment of slavery on the planet as, a, as an institution, which is the foundation of all the politics on the planet, not some, all of the modern world politics. Now, logically, you already know that them congressmen are not going to have that discussion because they've got to admit that they've been lying too. This is a conversation, you know, playing you, then you just pull us out. As an example, even like this, right? With the budgeting, U.S. budgeting, right? As an example, and this is for, I, I wanted to get a copy, uh, I'll get a chance to copy this for you, but I'm going to put this in some other lessons so you have it because I'm going to do more extension on it. And this is uh, Bill Clinton's um, a March 97, the Establishment Commission on the Study of Capital Budgeting. And this is what all the presidents do, the U.S. presidents. Now, you must understand the U.S. presidents versus the United States Republic presidents are two different jurisdictions. You must understand that. When you talk about the state of Pennsylvania and Pennsylvania State Commonwealth, you're talking two different jurisdictions. State of Pennsylvania is a slave state. Pennsylvania Republic is a free state. Free states were overthrown. This is why it's important for you to know that the U.S. Uh, adjourned sine dia, which means as a corporate entity, it does not exist. The state of Pennsylvania belongs to the Jesuits of Rome. And so all the activities that have been, the negative activities, the war machine, etc., the military complex, all belongs to the Jesuits of Rome, belongs to the church and the politics on how they treat our people in the communities, how they rape our communities and send all the finance to European communities that we keep calling racism because the people like the Black Congress, Congress and stuff keep on saying racism when they know it's not because that gives you a good argument but you have no cure. It's genocide and a violation of international law. See, so if you're arguing racism, you have no cure because it's an attitude. You argue a, a genocide, then you can uh, take both private persons and constitutional obligated persons to the court of justice. So make sure that you all have that aware. And this is another reason why we did that um, international proclamation and sent it to the different nations, including China and even one of the Ecuadorian citizens that come to our class in Harlem, hand delivered it to the uh, Ecuadorian uh, embassy consulate and she signed off by hand. They didn't. They not only stamped it, they signed off by hand. They were so glad that somebody here would stop playing that black game with our people, causing them to be in slavery and having no remedy whatsoever. So she signed off, also signed a card, etc. China responded, uh, Venezuela responded, Bolivia responded, Cuba. Um, I'll read it to you. Anyway, I think I bought it. Minor. a copy of the original and of course we we stamped it wrote over the stamp wrote through the stamp and put the red fingerprint on the stamp and the paper I have a so question, we become brother. the postmaster thank you um, thank you brother are, are we allowed to ask questions as you as you go oh we're going to get into that yeah oh, okay. i want i want to lay it out because i want to um because the time factor and i know that some of the things that I'm talking about um, that some people who are erudite, erudite in both the history and law are aware of that but those some things are things that you're going to have to take points on and do some research on if you understand but the information has to get out because of counter moves that are being made by different law firms around the country trying to counter us because last year when we did that rid of discovery shut the banks down and so they pissed off at us. And then plus, when I did that thing for Philadelphia, when he was shutting all that stuff down, them lawyers here is pissed off at me because Judge Denby, Denby, who wasn't going to give them a stay, was forced to give them the stay. Then the Congress had to give them 106 million notes, so-called, to help them. But that wasn't really the issue. The issue are the deeds of trust. And so most of the things I'm, I talk about are things that are actual remedy. Although we could talk about process, most of the process within the false jurisdiction ends up with no remedy. So until the people start dealing on a national or an international law venue and a consular venue, 
which of you, of course, you know that um, Eisenhower suspended in 54, but the people themselves have to move in that direction because they're not going to give you remedy because they're a fraud government. Now, this is why it's important to understand. The U.S. corporation is a fraud government. It's not legitimate on any front. It absolutely belongs to the Jesuits. Everybody knows that except most of our people in our community. They're sitting around talking racism. When you go talk to them, you're not talking to a legitimate government. They're just sitting in the seats. And if you don't know that, and you're logically you're being forced to deal with them, which is understandable. You know, if somebody's robbing you, you're forced to deal with that robber. But you need to know who that robber really is, not who you assume him to be. Do you understand what I'm saying? And, and this is another reason, because I know that a lot of call and tell pro members who infiltrated all the organizations um, are aware of that. You know, that's that's where you have the big sellout in the Moors uh, Science Temple of America, the big sellout in the Nation of Islam, the big sellout of, uh, of Marcus Garvey. All of it has the same absolute root. And if you don't know the real root of it, you don't. You think these things are in, dis, disconnected? They're not disconnected. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying to you? And so what happens is, uh, many of the leadership who know these things didn't tell this part because some of them took finance. Do you, do you understand to keep that black thing going when they know these people ain't black? Do you understand? But that allowed the 14th Amendment to be operating for the radical Republicans by which the people are listed as artificial Christian property. This is why the president has to vote every couple presidents for them to even vote using them European names. Now logically, so-called black congressmen ain't going to tell that truth because they've been, they've been part of the fraud. And they're not going to tell these people that under war powers they're going to get unseated. That's another reason why they locked that European up who, when he gleaned uh, parts of the King Alfred off the uh, government computers that they were selling at auction that wasn't supposed to be on there. He's in solitary confinement now. You know, and they know about King Alfred, but even when they talk about King Alfred, uh, uh, whether it's, you know, uh, some uh, of the Asiatics who are activists trying to help our people, they conveniently avoid the part that lets these people know that they're tied to this continent by heritage. Because they have these people thinking that they just came from off that side. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? So what that does, that, that verifies, you understand, the sellout because it lets people know that Noble Drawley was telling them the truth from day one. If you, you get the point. And, 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 it, and that allows, say, for instance, somebody who, um, who basically doesn't even know law. If they recognize that they're tied to this land, they look at their whole process totally different. They won't be marching and praying and keeping hope alive. They will deal. They will be dealing with international laws of justice and charge this man with genocide. But see, if they charge him with racism, then they deal with Title 42, which is under the 14th Amendment, and then they might give him two dollars and all that old stuff. You know, semi suit, bounce him around for five years with some Negro preacher who's also a lawyer, acting like he's separate and playing games with them. You know, like they won something. When the real deal. That is that would be called because whenever there's a violation of national or international law, it is automatically what's called a federal question, and a federal question is not in the jurisdiction of any state court. It is superior. You understand? So it would have to go into what you call a federal court. And then, of course, the U.S. corporation is illegitimate. So then, it would, because they turned all their officers over to the U.N. under the IMF in 1933 under the War Powers Act. Therefore, they're not legitimate. They would have to go to world court. So now, they can't take these people to world court as Negroes because that indicates that they're property because no such nation of people exists on the planet Earth. Then they'd have to go to their birthright lineage. Then they'd have to go back to George Washington's paper, go back to the founding of his government, then have to tell these people that they're Moors. Now you got a problem. That's why the black Congress is not going to be honest with you. But not that they know. So what I did, I tied the, I tied the, um, I tied the, the Constitution together, and I put the Britmore coat of arms on it, so they couldn't deny, because the Danes were were Moors, and the foundation of the politics in North America that the people keep calling racism is the Treaty of Verona. Now, and so that means.
Now those who know, know, but for those who don't know, that's the basis of politics in North America. That's also the basis of all your Masonic secrets. You understand? Now, so anybody in government, any any European in government, etc., that runs this government, got to be a Mason, and he got to wear a more face in secret. And our pyramid, which are the most important symbols of Masonry. And this is why you see like your so-called black leaders who also have them, don't want their followers to see them with a fez on. Because they know this too. You understand? And uh, um, so that's a, 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 again why I put George Washington's letter to the Sultan also in it, tying it together. And, and for those of you uh, who are scholars who are aware of it, most of them never look at it with his garb on. So I put his garb on, right? Now remember that he was appointed, he wasn't elected. He was appointed to the palace April the 30th, 1789. So when I read the letter, I'm going to show you the connection. Then as we're reading at the desk, I'm going to go into congressional record and show you basically, although it's just giving you the synopsis on how our, our citizenship was lost. But you already know why they closed the Freedman's Bureau. But you can see in the nature of the law, the dynamics. But you would also know that these people couldn't be U.S. citizens. They couldn't if they wanted to be. You know, how, how, however, they can lose their nationality by being naturalized, but they still couldn't be U.S. citizens. They could only be Christian property, you know, as 14th Amendment citizens, which would be corporate entities versus natural people, thus clothed with rights, but not having, in fact, rights. All right, and so I also want you to keep this in mind for those of you who are erudite in law, ipso facto, if so, juror, and that's very important. Anybody got your law books? Tyson, you got any law books here? Bouvier's or Black's Law? You got your Black's Law, you got your compact, or you got the big one? There's a lot of people who, who knowing that the people are waking up, are selling them expatriation packages. And you cannot dissolve a citizenship that don't apply to you. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? So to George Washington, and for those who are researchers, documents of American history, all right? Then the other information I'll give you is directly from the congressional records, all right? And other parts that are commentary that I've made, I'll tell you, so that you can counter it, research, and my position to you now is prove it wrong. All right? Of course, in the process, you're going to learn more. Great and magnanimous friend. Letter from George Washington to the Sultan, Muhammad ibn Abdullah, Sultan of Morocco, City of New York, December the 1st, 1789. Great and magnanimous friend, since the date of the letter which the late Congress from their president addressed your imperial majesty the united states of america have thought proper to change their government and institute a new one agreeable to the constitution of which i have the honor herewith to enclose a copy so that also proves the connection and that also dispels those scholars who told you that that constitution has nothing to do with you it has nothing to do with you as a black because you're Christian property, but in your proper person, being of Moorish descent, it absolutely is tied to you because you were the sovereign. That's why it was necessary for them to remove your nationality, remove your religion, and brand you with European names so that whatever you bought or sold with that European mark became state property automatically. That's why it was necessary for them to close the Freedmen's Bureau on 1868 and establish the artificial person under the 14th Amendment and meet on a Saturday and create what is called an artificial person and all corporate entities are registered in Delaware as corporate entities, thus Negroes are property. That's the key to the property, all right? Now, so I'm going to, that's the first paragraph. 
The time necessarily employed in the arduous task and the disarrangements occasioned by so great though peaceable a revolution will apologize and account for your majesty's agriculture and commerce, but our soil is bountiful and our people industrious and we shall gradually become useful to our friends. Pay attention to this paragraph, or close attention to this paragraph. The encouragement with which your majesty has been pleased generously to give to our commerce with your dominions, we think you're standing. Now you understand that pyramid on the back of that dollar bill that no politician speaks under? The punctuality with which you have caused a treaty with us to be observed and the just and generous measures taken in the case of Captain Proctor make a deep impression on the United States and confirm their respect for and attachment to your Imperial Majesty. It gives me great pleasure to have the opportunity of assuring your Majesty that while I remain at the head of this nation I shall not cease to promote every measure that may conduce to the friendship and harmony which so happily subsists between your empire and them and shall esteem myself happily in every occasion of convincing your majesty in high sense which in common with the whole nation I entertain the magnanimity, wisdom, and benevolence of your majesty. May the almighty bless your imperial majesty, our great and magnanimous friend, with his constant guidance and protection, George Washington, New York. So George Washington had to take his first oath of office on Day Street, Day Street in New York. And that's how it's spelled. Then he came here to Philadelphia and he had to take another one. And of course the Mummers Parade that starts as a tradition of the fall of the Moors, they dress on 6th and Moore Street. And they go eat west, 90 degrees past the battleground which is City Hall. And the cornerstone is in an open grave pit and a parapet just like a mosque with the Zodiac Law of the Moors right in the courtyard with the four corners and then the Grand Lodge one North Broad Street and they used to dress in what you call blackface into the good administration and then they make the judgment and then the Mama's Parade is over. Celebration of the Fall of the Moors. Right? It's a jour. Law term. Of course the brother knows but I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you right from the law and because we know that we have COINTELPRO infiltrators. I came directly from the Congressional Records and I left it just as it is so they can't refute it because they have a tendency to say, oh, that's that brother's opinion. That's how he feel and I don't believe that. No, it ain't got nothing to do with what you believe. You better learn law. If you're going to live in a government, you should know how that government is run. If you're living in a government, you should know its constitution. If you're living in a government paying taxes, you should know how things function. If you don't, you're incompetent. Do you understand? If you're going to talk about rights or lack of rights and you don't know the laws that run government, you're incompetent. Your beliefs have nothing to do with anything. Facts have everything to do with everything. Right? So directly from the original nobility clause of Article of Amendment 13 with its 20 sections, not the two that you see in the school books for the dummies, and this is how they dumb our children down because they hold information just for secret societies, for Masons, Oddfellow, Grange, Ku Klux Klan, and our people get belief systems and pay all the bills. So when you see all them, all them black leader guys that been to the mountaintop, they talking about the pyramid. And in Masonry, the pyramid is called Muhammad's Mountain. You understand? And when you see the eye of Allah at the top, that means the inherited land of the earth. That's why you see no politicians speak under it. They'll speak under the bird, but not under that pyramid because it don't belong to them, it belongs to you. They overthrew you, put you in servitude, branded you with different names, have you think you're somebody else, and stole your birthright. All they needed you to do was start saying you're Smith, Jones, and Johnson. And as soon as you sign that name, you become property. You see? Not lawfully, but legally. You see? Legal is process. Law is the form. You see? So I'm going to read um, United States, and I took it directly from the Congressional Records. Article 13, and I'm going right to Section 12, right? And this is for people that make you uh, 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 believe that you got a dissolve of citizenship. Well, let's see what happens here. 
Section 12. The traffic in slaves with Africa is hereby forever prohibited on pain of death and the forfeiture of all the rights and property of persons engaged therein and the descendants of Africans shall not be citizens. Do you need to dissolve a citizenship? Could you ever be? So how is it that the 14th Amendment makes so-called Moors into black people, into Negroes, into light-skinned, orange-skinned, colored people, and whatever they are the next week, and then make them citizens? It's because of the Naturalization Act. Once naturalized, where they clothe you artificially with citizenship, remove your nationality, and then claim you as Christian property. What they got you to agree to be Negro, colored, or whatever they want to call you this week. You get the point? Because then they're not violating international law because they're not dealing with human trafficking. They're dealing with brands. And if you be the, agree to be the brand, you stepped outside the human family. And so voluntary servitude is lawful. Involuntary servitude is not lawful. Get the point? It's a trick. But it worked. So all they needed was some Negro leader preachers to go around and convince these people they're colored. That's why it's important to have law books. So you know that in law, color means artificial person. That which is distinguished from that which is real. So they teach the people that that means Afrocentricity, the deepness of commit and all that other stuff. And you just called yourself an artificial person. So does human rights apply to artificial persons? Can artificial persons co com complain about international law violations? That means they're subject to whatever state corporation has jurisdiction over their person. And person means corporation. It does not mean this. Natural person means this. Person means corporation. Constructed on paper, artificially. Are we clear? I know most of you know that, but I'm saying it just for the record. So let's go into, so I addressed citizenship, and I went also into the congressional records, and I, and I left them as they were. I didn't even clean them up. You know, that's because of course, the country, you have some law firms misrepresenting Moors because Moors are claiming birthright and claiming property. Those who understand law, if you understand what I'm saying. Even some Europeans are taking our writs and claiming their property because they're the new nigger. So now they want the republic back. But you understand they're dealing on principles of law. They're not dealing on principles of emotion, on law. And logically, when the people get wake, if they really start claiming their birthright, it's going to shut the banks down. And so when it shuts the banks down, you know that it affects the Rothschilds and all of them, and of course the Treaty of Verona, which is really all the secret societies operate on, and then that's Pandora's box. You, so you can understand why black leader guys ain't talking this, because they getting paid off too, with a 501c3 from the Jesuits to have one foot in the church and one in the White House and acting like they're separate, and they're actually overseers keeping these people stupid, while everybody rapes them. Do you understand? While they themselves study Islam, and we ain't talking about ritual Islam, we're talking about the science of Islam that runs this planet. Because there's two forms of Islam, too. Just like there's two forms of Christianity, Yahudism, what you call Judaism, etc. But yet all of them, whether you're dealing with the Imams, Grand Sheiks, High Priest, Jesuits, Knights Templar, Knights of Columbus, DAR, Union Guard, all of them in secret got a Moorish fez. Even though their agendas may be different. Do you understand? And they take oaths to Rome to keep this crap going and go to their people and have them cutting each other's strokes with their different sects and talking about how much Allah they love, how much Jesus they love, how much Muhammad they love. And they're as beastly as the bear that just came out the woods. But the rulers know. That's what is called collectively the Masonic secret. They act separate out here but they meet together in secret to run the world. That's what's been going on, that's what's been kept from the masses. That's what's wrong with our communities. That's also what Il Malik found out, that's why they killed him, because they couldn't buy him off. He took a European, blue-eyed European Muslim, told him, you ain't, don't come here that black stuff. You ain't visiting home just because you made the Hajj, you left home. Then he knew there was nowhere to go, because that's the 360 degrees. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's why conveniently everybody's like this. This is also when they hit Martin, because he was a 33 degree Mason when he threatened to tell. Everybody was standing over here. He's standing by himself. 
The photographer was CIA, man. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying to you? And so the game is, the, you know, and it's like this. If you're really going to solve the problem of our people, you're going to have to dig and tell the real truth. And it's uncomfortable. Because some people you love is really co and tell, bro. But that's how you can tell who's who, by going into the records. Don't go with your emotions. Go into the records. And even now, that's why, like, for instance, if you start doing research trying to get even some of the pieces of King Alfred now, you understand, they'll send a bug to your computer. Or just block it. You, you understand what I'm saying to you? But anyway, and I'll read some of that too, you know, for them quote unquote Negro leader guys. Inappropriate persona, etc., citizenship, addressing the issues of citizenship. Citizenship has always been a subject that has invoked sensitivities. This is my commentary. Then I'll go into the absolute law. Citizenship has always been a subject that has invoked sensitivities and controversy in North American politics and sociology. In particular, emphasis has been placed upon the subject because of the destructive and corrupt effects imposed upon the Aboriginal and indigenous natural peoples due to European occupation, colonization, exploitation, usurpation, misrepresentations, miseducation, and other arbitrary social and political activities which they, the Peregrinus immigrants, have imposed upon the Al Moroccans of the land. And the established fact of alien intrusion must be recognized and affirmed for the reasoning minds to consider in these refined controversies and arguments concerning citizenship. Logistically, territorial jurisdiction as well as in personam jurisdiction, etc., and subject matter jurisdiction or perspectives come into political consideration. And thus, the matters involving nationality, naturalization, nationalization, alliantship, sanguinous, or statutory, are of unavoidable social, geographical, and political import. Properly, status and estate rights are always involved in all social and economic activities and decisions made by governments. And the same issues are of equal or of sometimes more personal importance in these issues of obligations, taxation, secured rights, and other intersocial activities entered into by the citizen members of any said, you know, the said governments. Now, natural people more often than is acknowledged publicly have need for affirmative uh, deducement and clarity in these areas of interchange. And the word citizen, in a general sense, refers to a natural person, human being, who has a bloodline relationship or his, um, to his fellow, to his or her fellow native family and native nation, being the rightful, permanent inhabitants of land or country, ETC. Now, this status is distinguished from a person who is a foreigner, who is of another nation or country, or who has citizenship, and political allegiance or alliance to another nation or state, etc. These things must be clear with you. That's why I'm pointing these things out before we go into law and citizenship. Now, in matters of the corporations, which are artificial persons, created on paper by legal process, nationality is still relevant and key. It is a recognized rule that the nationality of the creator or constructor of a said corporate entity expresses an expansion or extension of himself or herself. And the nationality of the corporation is the same as the nationality of the natural person who is its founder or creator. And these concepts must be clear. And the reason I'm putting it there because most law schools will not tell you that because they, they they practice what you call cross-jurisdiction regularly. And if they tell you those things, you would recognize that certain things they're telling you from door, from processes, are automatically void of law, but happen to be color of law. And one of the clear distinctions that must be made, particularly with our people since we're targets, they must distinctly know de jure law from de facto law. They must distinctly know constitution principles, founded, limited jurisdiction, cross-jurisdiction, versus de jure law and uh, 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 de facto law. 
and you already know that nine times out of ten they'll teach them process but will not teach them form of law. So it's important for them to understand foundation of constitutional law and why all political officials must take their oath on it. And this is also why they must have a performance bond. Also why you should ask for that performance <coughs> bond when they start talking trash to you. Or they charge you with something and you don't ask for their performance bond, you've just given up a right. Because most of them are not even lawful judges. They are administrative, ministerial clerks exercising judicial authority and powers that don't belong to them, i.e. they're racketeering. You understand what I'm saying to you? This is the reason why most of the time when they're rolling our people through the courts, the, 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 the uh, barristers will never tell these people or they themselves will never put in a, a commanding and complete discovery demand, not request, demand. Because it will reveal the corruption of the, of the whole system. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? From top to bottom. See, so instead they'll have, they'll start, oh, they're just racist. And everybody runs around marching and praying, talking about racism. And it's not racism, it's birthright theft. Race is the species. The species broken down into extended families that are called nations and nationalities. If you don't believe it, go to the parkway and look at the flags. If you can't stand on your flag, jump in the river. And you'll see anybody comes to this country or, or, or even New York can stand on their flag except our people walking up down the street think they're Negro, Black, and Colored, and whatever they are next week. The only ones that think human beings are crayons and start telling you what their beliefs are. The rest of the world deals on science, mathematics, geometry, gold, silver, interchange. We deal with beliefs. That's why we had to buy them a ladder and make everybody else rich. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? So these points are important to because you have to know how is it that these intelligent people always end up getting shafted because pieces of information are missing from them that are vital to the fundamentals of civilization itself. And our forefathers were the founders of civilization and we're the major ones that violate them. Don't even know fundamental jurisprudence. And keep mixing our emotions with facts. And then get shafted and accused the civilized world of racism. Because they won't run around talking about their crayons. Light skin, orange skin, purple people, and it don't matter what color you are. That's mental, that's mental, that's like a, a child is on Ritalin. You never see a Chinese come here talking about these light skin, orange skin, yellow guys. We're the light skin, yellow guys rights organization. It's totally asinine. Yes, but they don't recognize because the European removed those principles. You see what I'm saying? And they'll admit that the a lack of education and the miseducation, but won't examine where they're miseducated at. You'll never see people come from Africa talking about they light skin, orange skin, black people, and all that stuff. They declare their nationality. They're well, color of law remains color of law, and anything constructed under it remains color. And any contract constructed under a color of law gains no office, gains no authority, gains no validity, gains no life no matter how many generations is used. If it is constructed in color, it remains colored. And colored is a fraud or de facto, isn't it? It is quasi any kind of way you look at it. So now they have a quasi, quasi citizenship position, right? Trying to make a legitimate argument as if they're de jour. They're not de jour. The de jour people don't even know who they are. <laughs> I mean, did you see the dynamics that they're, the problem that they're having? Mm -hmm. And so, some of them, as you have heard from time to time, are arguing to dissolve or to alter the 14th Amendment in order to attack the Mexicans. Because yes. the sisters, you understand? All right, the Europeans put the Moors under the 14th Amendment as blacks and Negroes and West Indians, blah, 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 right? To make them Christian property, right? And so then they got the nigger leaders, you know, to be priests under the Jesuits, and they've been telling people that colored means Afrocentricity. And black is committing of the melanin, right? And they're getting paid by the popes and paid by the state and paid by the followers who think there's a J in Hebrew. They think they love Jesus and these guys in secret get the books and it's Yahshua. Yes. 
never tell the people about the Septuagint, which is the foundation of the Bible. Because they Masons, right? And they live in all these people and everything and acting like they love Jesus and all the people, right? Now all of a sudden, that class has been dissolved. Now they want to tell. I don't think it's going to, you know, you don't tell the Don, well, you're going to take my territory, Don, you know. Don, I mean, how are you going to roll my stuff and give it to him, man, you know. I've been loyal and stuff like this. And Don, once you threaten the Don, you can't take it back. You disappear. Do you, you understand? You understand? Uh, and there's no defense because it's all over the world. This whole fraud is all over the world. So you ain't going to see none of them so-called black leaders come out and then put their Moorish fez on in their churches and stuff and then people start asking them, what does that fez mean? How come that tassel's there? How come you don't wear it when you come into the mosque and the synagogue and the church and stuff? But all you same guys that act all different is in these clubs together with them fezes on, with jewels and stuff on it, all these Moorish names that y'all don't tell us about. They got a lot to answer to, don't they? What's the, why come y'all all got that apron with the eye on it? What's that eye mean? What's that compass in the square really mean? Especially the G. You understand what I'm saying? Something like matches? <clears throat> How about a little nuclear calendar? Don't go out? <laughs> anyway, so... The problem that they're having is that the sisters know what they've done. So what they're doing, they're getting pregnant and they're coming to term nine months. Then they're coming back into older Mexico. And then they're having the babies. And so that locks them in under the 14th Amendment that they screwed the Moors under. But they don't care because they got a nationality. Right. Then they don't need a green card. Mm -hmm. Do you catch the, the, the strategy? Mm -hmm. So the Christians are saying, call them anchor babies. Yeah. Why? They get anchored, they can't get them out. Mm -hmm. Then, so what happens is then the Mexican communities are organizing and then they vote out local officials. Right. And that's how they're taking it back. Right. So now, so they want to dismantle the 14th Amendment. Remember McCain and all them was talking trash? Then all of a sudden, it went silent. You know why it went silent? Because if they dismantle that 14th Amendment, what I just read to you is out the bag. Including all their Negro leaders. You, and still going to these houses of worship and seeing them Negro leaders, you'll be saying, How, the lights ain't changing. And you notice some somebody's hanging from them poles. And they start, people start recognizing how they've been suffering all these years and their so-called religious leaders have been helping in this whole fraud. <laughs> you only have to tell nobody why they murdered Malcolm. They'll know it immediately. So you know that means for all the rest of them. And they knew this all the time. All the time. And many of them had nationality cards at the same time. That's why before they murdered the brother, they said, get your hands out of my pocket. That was a yes. signal. Why? Because they was being paid off. Mm -hmm. And if you start telling the truth, do you understand? This dirt will come out. Ain't none of them holy. You understand what I'm saying to you? Because these people believe in them. You know? And so they start pointing the finger at the European all the time so the people don't pay attention to them. Get the point? Yes, but them congressional records will expose them. You, you understand? All right. Um, so the Treaty of Verona, 1213, between King John of England. Now, since in 1861, in March, they adjourned Sina Dia. Even then, the U.S. does not exist except in operative name only, which means they've been operating fraudulently since, meaning they've never been legitimate since. So it's just like somebody being fired from a job and, and the people don't know better, so they keep coming and punching the card yeah. using authority that don't even belong to them. Mm 
and doing things to people in the name of authority that they don't even have, i.e. they're organized criminals. So let's talk about what the world governments have said about this, and this is also what you all need to know and get on top of, and you will be operating with, and also why um, we did some claims to the international community on behalf of the people. And that is Convention on the Prevention of Punishments of the Crime of Genocide. So whenever you're doing your documents, add this, because what they don't want you to do, be standing out to the world community. Genocide, piracy. It's a lot of issues. Those two things are flags. So when you start complaining, they start doing things from you, and understand it goes for private people as well as so-called government officials. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Because you're not going to get remedy in these courts. Not that they won't let a few through in order to keep people's blind faith in the system, but understand they're carrying out this. That's what you've been calling prejudice. This is what's really going on, and the Negro leaders will tell the people, they hide this and say, they don't like your color. It is prejudice. Let us march, and then let us pray. And they, generation after generation after generation, and they knew all the time that this was what was happening. So if you don't argue this, do you get remedy? No. If somebody don't like you, can you sue them? If they violate their constitution and international law, then you gotta sue, don't you? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. I don't like your sneaks because they're green and they match your other stuff. Oh man, he's racist. Well, sue me. Do you understand? Yeah, it, 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 cause there ain't nothing gonna happen. Yeah, I told him he was a racist. You did? <laughs> you wasn't scared? Oh man, that brother called him racist. Oh, like you just did something. Yeah. And in line tomorrow, paying tickets, running the townships. Mm -hmm. On fraud law. Converting people's rights into crimes. But they don't want to study law. Do you see what the problem is? Hmm? Anyway, Convention on the Pre uh, Prevention and Punishment of the Crime of Genocide. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to put this also in the back of the rights of indigenous people with the updates that Obama signed when he came back from overseas. So I'm going to put it in the back so that you don't have to go somewhere else for it. It'll be there. You know what I mean? And available to you. And we're going to put a couple more writs on the site as an example and also some examples on um, the addresses of the International Court of Justice so that you can, you can start doing electronic mailings, etc., notifying uh, the International Court of Justice for violations, etc. Adopt by Resolution 263A of the United Nations General Assembly on, on 9th December uh, 1948, and of course the last le edited was uh, January 27, uh, 1997. And as you understand, these things would have been given to our people, and they sitting around marching, talking about civil rights when they should have been talking this. So you can see how they've been diverted by their own so-called guys who have been telling them this. International law doesn't protect people without a nation nationality because laws come from nations, not from crayons. Human beings aren't crayons. They have nationalities, they have a bloodline. Without the honor of your mothers and fathers, you can't enforce international law because you're not a part of it. That's called dishonor. And when you start arguing right, you're in contempt. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? That's why you have a bar association member represent you because nine times out of ten, you're using their name anyway. <coughs> Get the point? All right, um, Act 3, the following acts shall be punishable. A, genocide. B, conspiracy to commit genocide. C. Direct and public incitement to commit genocide. D. Attempt to commit genocide. E. Complicity in genocide. Article 4. Persons committing genocide or any of the other acts enumerated in Article 3 shall be punished whether they are constitutionally responsible rulers, public officials, or private individuals. So that even goes for them. Private individuals think they're getting away with it. So one of the things that you want to start doing 
is whenever you get traffic tickets, uh, whenever you go into court and there's not a, a trial by jury, yes, you're looking at these cases, but do not fail to remember this. So make preforms. Make sure you get the judge's name. Make sure you get the prosecutor's name. Anybody that you see in them offices, you know, keep a low profile. Take every name that you can see from the policemen that give you a ticket on the street and be prepared to send it to the International Court of Justice and learn to do so. So make preforms, just like they make preforms and give you tickets, make preforms and start filling in the names, numbers, etc. Do research, find their performance bonds. And as a matter of fact, write the commissioner when you make these claims and tell them to suspend their performance bond until, until the issue is satisfied. And when you send it outside this country, they can't cover it up. So get used to it. And we're going to be putting those protocols on the sites with links so that you can find out, so that you can defend yourself because the nigger leaders ain't going to defend you because they are agents working with them. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Meaning that you won't need no lawyers. You need to get active. You need to understand what powers you have that you haven't been using. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? And we're going to do the best that we can to see that you are empowered, that you don't need no leader guys who've been selling you out anyway. At, uh, Article 4. Persons committing genocide or any of the other acts enumerated in Article 3 shall be punished, whether they are constitutional uh, responsible leaders, public officials, or private individuals, that's reaffirmed for you. Article 5, the connecting parties undertake to enact in accordance with their respective constitutions the necessary legislation to give effects to the provisions of, uh, of the present convention and in particular to provide effective penalties for persons guilty of genocide or any of the other acts enumerated in Article 3. Persons charged with genocide or any of the other acts enumerated in Article 3 shall be tried by a competent tribunal of the state in the territory of which the act was committed. So therefore, as you can understand now, you challenge the jurisdiction of the states to make sure that they actually begin to operate in a proper judicial manner so that they can't bury it. And make sure that whenever you're addressing them, make sure that you also carbon copy and so if you're going to deal with any of your departments, make sure you also send to the Human Rights Division of the United Nations because the U.S. put all their departments, transferred them all to them, therefore they're a corporate body. So you make sure you're going to write to the COs. And when you argue with them, don't keep on arguing with these little guys on the street. Go right to the heads. And never just send it to one department because they will try to bear it because you can, try, you can charge them in an international court. So they're always going to bounce it around. That's why you see them they're always flipping judges and changing lawyers and trying to force lawyers on people and everything because they know that they're corrupt. But they know that most of the people don't know that they're corrupt. That's why you got to start making con connections on the outside. Do you understand? Get used to it. Um, genocide and other acts are... Um, Enumerated as Article 3 shall not be considered a, as political crimes for the purpose of extract, extradition. And the contracting parties pledge themselves in such cases to grant extradition in accordance with the laws and treaties in force. Also, I want you all to do some research and you'll see where uh, Mexico, Germany, Paraguay, and a few other countries have sued the United States on behalf of citizens that they have either prosecuted, executed, or, or, or given jail time without notifying the consulars of those nations. And just because the U.S. Uh, uh, suspended consular courts to block our remedy doesn't remove the fact that the rest of the civilized world don't know better. That's to bring you up, up to date on that, all right? So you'll recognize that they are being addressed and you need to address them the same way. This is the reason why they, they you know, brand these people's crayons so they would not have uh, what you call due process because consular court would be the automatically, automatic because Article 3, Section 3, or uh, Section 2 would deal with diversity. And see, so it's automatically diversity, even as expressed in 
uh, the congressional records where you couldn't be citizen, so diversity is automatic. So since Eisenhower shut down consular court, that gave the people no venue. You see? So just keep that in mind so you can you be thinking no lawful venue. Not they didn't have a venue, they had no lawful venue. And so that allowed them to institute, you know, those colorable courts given the appearance of due process when there was not. And with less and less of it ever intending to be due process. And that's how they packed the jails with our people. You know, our people call it racism. And look at so many, so many percentage of the people in jail was black. Yeah, they're black because there's Christian property. But if there was nationals, they wouldn't have got away with that. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? Why? Because it would have been what? Obvious that they were maintaining human trafficking. Also, write that down because you're going to charge them with human trafficking. You're going to charge them with peonage. And I'm showing you points of genocide, and we're going to make sure this is available to you. Put it on the site so you can see it for yourself. And use it and make up all and any of your complaints. And so when you see they're profiling our people in our communities, they didn't have to start arguing racism. Why didn't they argue this, which is what they should have been arguing? Why? Racism gets nowhere. It gets everybody paid, including the leader guys. But it doesn't get remedy for the people, and didn't stop the, didn't stop the profiling. Why? Because they weren't profiling your, I mean, uh, human beings. They're pro profiling Christian property, who agreed to be Negroes on the Fourteenth Amendment. Charge them with genocide now becomes international <coughs> incident, doesn't it? Same thing with Rodney King. If they charged him with this and still racism and stuff like that, it'd have been worse for them, and they wouldn't have had them cops out in two years. You understand what I'm saying to you? because it's been an international inter incident. But by the people not having a nationality, they could just treat them just like they do a dog. As a matter of fact, they, matter of fact, they wouldn't even get, they kill one of our people. They don't charge them with murder. They charge them with a civil rights violation because they're not considered human beings. And, and it's very easy once you start studying law and history, you can see they misclassified the people in order to get away with this. Not only that, when, when they were so-called dealing with remedy, they weren't getting remedies because they have them in an improper venue. And they'd have them in the venue as commerce rather than as human beings. You see? As chattel property. They just weren't saying it, but the venue is for chattel property. You see? But by the people thinking that slavery was ended, they just thinking, it don't matter what color you are, it's chattel courts. And known that they're chattel courts. You see? So if you know what it is, your argument will be different, wouldn't it? And um, so there's uh, 19, 19 sections, and so we're going to add that. We're going to add that to the rights of indigenous people, and so that'll that'll be updated. You know, we're going to put some other stuff, also with some of the stuff that Obama just signed when he came back, to update it to get people on on point, and. Um, also, we're going to list in it uh, the International Court of Justice, the, uh, the address, so you can start doing some electronic correspondence, etc. Basically, when you nationalize something, you're going to give it your own application. No, words, and like this. All right. Now, we're all family. I'm older than you. That doesn't stop you from being my mother, even if I didn't come from your womb. Now, we're talking about divine law. We ain't talking about belief systems. Belief systems, you know, like we all this, you know, we Allah and all this sort of stuff, and yeah, right, I got a belly button, don't I? I got these buttons, they don't feed nothing, do they? That's the proof where I came from. However, I can maintain beliefs that say contrary to that. Allah didn't say that. We make that kind of stuff up. That's in violation of divine law. Now, as an example, mother, baby, right? So we got another baby here. Maybe two or three more, right? They got a mother too, but she over in the corner, she's doing what she wants to do. You know what I mean? Rolling blunts and doing a whole bunch of stuff that's not necessarily good. You're being responsible, right? So being a mother, because it's your character and your nature, and you know what our culture is, our culture is, if a child's here, it's still ours. So now, so you sharing, right? Right? So now you got 
baby on one, you got the other babies on the other, and the other ones are waiting. But if you start getting sick and you start losing your health, the firstborn has to be called. I mean, then that's called nationalization. The same rules in nationhood. When the mother gets sick, the way you save nations, you nationalize. Everybody got to go home to their mother. In other words, everyone must confess their own. That's what that means. In the Bible, Heliotech, Quran, Waspi, the Vedas, etc., when it says, the time has come when every nation must worship on its vine, own vine and tree tree, that is nationalization. That means everyone must confess their mother. That's sanguinous. In other words, that's called juice sanguinous. Write that down so you can go look it up in law. If you don't think it's right, go check it out. Juice sang Winus. Does that mean by like blood and by That's blood? by blood and by right. By blood and birth right. Now, the other is legislative. Now, when you're talking about nationalized, that's when you're claiming your own mother. That's Jew sanguinous. Now, if you're adopting somebody and you're giving them the privilege, then that's called naturalization. So look up the Naturalization Act of 1870. And this is when the Europeans start calling themselves white people. Before that, they were called red people, or what you call Roman. Roman means red man. So you got to know history and law to understand the dynamics of your politics. Could you repeat that, uh, Naturalization Act of? Nat uh, 1870. Yeah. Naturalization is legislated, which means it's done by legal process on paper. It has nothing to do with bloodline. The ultimate power to make a claim of true inheritance must be Jew sanguinous. Do you understand what I'm saying? You know and I know the reason they don't teach our people these things is because we've always been screwed. We always look for privileges. We don't know about rights. And those who've been taking advantage of us aren't going to teach us those things. Why? Because it removes some of them who are sellouts, who've been playing this game with us when they know that because that's how they get their degrees. Do you understand? Our people, you know, like people walk around with titles and people think they just got titles because somebody, po you know, assigned them because they boys. That might happen in some cases. But in truth, if you got an Adam, an Imam, a rabbi, a, um, a Shakun, a Griot, all of them are PhDs. They're doctors of philosophy. They just got different titles to the culture, but it's the same. Do you understand? Now, people are assuming that that's because they had this morning they got up and they talked to Allah or they talked to Jesus, Muhammad, and, and Moses, and all of a sudden they are ordained. No. They must know the history. Do you understand what I'm saying? And they're playing people because they get these degrees. All of them get them. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? What happens is when they go out into their clubs because they keep people divided so they can make sure that they get theirs and they ain't competing with the other one next door. You know what I'm saying? When that truth can all be traced to one source. All of them. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? And they must study religion in order to know that. In other words, the same principles that, like, say, as an example, the same principle uh, of the story of Isis and um, Osiris, where she had they chopped up the pieces, scattered them, and etc., and she brought them back together, and so now he's potent. And then now we got Oris, which is the sun, right? That same principle is demonstrated with Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings will Allah be upon him, when he went and because of the corruption and got all the fundamental truths out of all the major religions and brought them back together. That's why Islam does not interrupt the, the customs, the local customs, but yet it is universal in character. Are, are we clear? Therefore, people need to understand the principles the universal principles and not get confused with different customs that you may see in different nations with Islam just because they're customs. But the principles are universal to the brotherhood of man. Do you understand? It's not a bias. Do you understand what I'm saying? However, people who study or take on the different principles and bring their own biases in then start creating sects. And there is no sectalism in Islam as long as it remains to its order of universal truth. But then when you bring sectalism in, whether it's Judaism, Christianity, etc., then it creates divisions. 
But yet the rulers know the truths, the fundamental truths that is all built on, which means like, so if I see this seven golden candlesticks in the book of Revelation, right, as, a, as an Adam and as a sheik, I already know that that's also symbolic of Elah, which is also symbolized by the seven circles around Kabbah. Do you understand? That's ritual, but there's a science and there's a philosophy in there, and it can be found from Africa into Hindustan, into China, into all the tribes here. Do you understand what I'm saying? But yet it's been distorted by people or rulers who've been taking advantage of the people and have them cutting each other's throat when they themselves know the truth and they can solve the problem of confusion and religion overnight if they wanted to. Do you understand? That's why they murder all the prophets every time they come around. And they tell, oh, look what the devil did. The devil ain't kill him. It's always organized religionists that murder the prophets. What, was the devil run Prophet Muhammad out? Oh, was it the devil that so-called lynched Esau? <laughs> it was people calling themselves religious. What did they always do? Come to them and give them the opportunity to stop the BS and tell the people the truth. Right? Then they conspire, either run the prophets out and murder them, and tell, and tell the people, look what the devil did. We got to raise some money to fight the devil and start crying, talking about they got roof, leaking roofs and everything. They're the problem. However, it's uncomfortable. It's a very uncomfortable truth. Now, all high priests know because they're taught that the devil's a myth created by the Jesuits for world rulership. It doesn't mean that there's not evil spirit or evil character or the lower self and the higher self, which is really us. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? And so they got the masses of people looking for this devil that they created, right? And know better. But the world are bound by that, aren't they? Aren't they? I'll give you an example. I don't know if I brought it with me. Now, if I was having a, a private conversation, right, with priest, rabbi, etc. Brahmin, none of them would disagree with me, privately. In public, they call me a rebel if it interferes with their finances. Or if it interferes, it's not, brother. If it interferes with their club members uh, being independent in thought from their mind control. I was trying to see if I had brought with me a book to ease. I apologize. I don't think... I did. I think I gave them all up in Indiana. But anyway, I do apologize. One of my favorite chapters from the Circle 7, from the Book of the East, is chapter 7 and chapter 8. And this is where they tell you that the priesthood is dead. But that same lesson you can find in China. That same lesson you find in Tibet. That same lesson you find here. The, 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 from the East, uh, the Book of the East, the Book of East, yes, please. <clears throat> the Secret Brotherhood of East, and that's why when Hoover infiltrated the the, the, um, the movement, that's why a, a, a lot of the, the people who was working with Grant, with uh, working with uh, J. Edgar Hoover, didn't tell a lot of the Moorish Americans about it, while the Prophet told them that this is no secret organization. He says, I'll pull the cover off all secret organizations. And you see half the Moorish Americans never even seen the book, don't even know it exists. But all them sheep got it. That's what makes them Adam. Adam means expert. George Washington was Adam. Benjamin Franklin, John Adams, mm -hmm. you know, and that's why I even expose them characters. You know, because people's concept of what they think masonry is and what it ain't is in, is in totally incorrect. Um, and, and one of the, one of the uh, most powerful introductions is reading the, prelimi uh, the pre uh, preliminary to the Treaty of Peace and Friendship. And you'll see that uh, Benjamin Franklin, John Adams, and uh, Thomas Jefferson was under the protections of Muhammad Ibn Abdullah, Sultan of Morocco. And that's why they were assigned the president's seat. Uh, 
after the Republic was adopted and they sent to the Sultan a copy of the Constitution for his approval. That's also why they don't read that letter in school, because it makes the people recognize that they're tied to this land. You see? Um, now, of course, for those who don't know, thank you, brother. It's one of my favorite chapters, and you can see why some of those uh, brothers don't let the followers hear this, right? Council of the Seven of the World, Mysteries of the Silent Brotherhood of the East, is the second half of the Circle Seven. All Adams get it. All Grand Sheets got it. Um, Council of the Seven of the World, in every age since time began, but seven sages lived. At first of every age, these sages meet to note the course of nations, peoples, tribes, and tongues, to note how far Milo's home the sages met. From China came Mexta, from India Vidyapati came, from Persia Caspar came, and from As uh, Assyria Ashbina came, from Greece Apollo came, Methana was the Egyptian sage, and Philo was the chief of Hebrew thought. The time was due. <clears throat> the council met and sat in silence seven days. And then Mexta rose and said, The wheel of time has turned once more, and the race is on a higher plane of thought. The garments that our fathers wore have given out. The cherubim have woven a celestial cloth, have placed it in our hands, and we must make for men new garbs. The sons of men are looking up for greater light. No longer do they care for God hewn out of wood. They seek for Allah not made with hands. And they see the beams of the coming days, and yet comprehend them not. The time is ripe, and we must fashion well these garments for the race. And let us make for men new garbs of justice, mercy, and love, that they may hide their nakedness when shines the light of coming days. And Vidyapati said, Our priests have all gone mad. They saw a demon in the wild, and at him cast their lamps, and they are all broken up, and not a gleam of light, light has any priest for men. The night is dark, and the heart of India calls for light. The priesthood cannot be reformed. It is already dead. Its greatest needs are graves and funeral chants. The new age calls for liberty, the kind that makes each man a priest, enables him to go alone and lay his offerings at the shrine, at, on the shrine of Allah. And Casper said, in Persia, people walk in fear. They do the good for the fear of doing wrong. And the devil is the greatest power in our land and though a myth, he dandles on his knees, both youth and age. Our land is dark, and evil prospers in the dark. Fear rides on every passing breeze, and lurks in every form of life. The fear of evil is a myth, is an illusion and a snare, but it will live until some mighty power shall come and raise the ethers to the plane of light. When this shall come to pass, the Magian land will glory in the light, and the soul of Persia calls for light. That's why the priests won't let people know this because the priesthood is dead. And they're preoccupied trying to preserve the priesthood and they know they've been holding these secrets of Allah from the people. That's why they ran Prophet Muhammad out. That's why they assassinated the Nazarene because he brought, they brought the light. And Prophet Muhammad came to, to complete the works of the Nazarene. Do you understand? That's why they keep in the history books and when they present it to the people, they keep separating them when they can could be traced to the same Gnostic culture. Thus Kaaba and the culture Kabbalah. And the science that runs this planet. And the redemption of the people is exposing the knowledge that all the priesthood have. That's how you free the people. And you're not going to free them any other kind of way because belief ain't going to fix nothing. You've got to have knowledge. You understand? And logically, the priesthood is upset. So when people reveal them secrets, they want to get rid of anybody. That's why Drawley said, in order to change these people, you got to change their literature. Now he put people in place, gave them them degrees, and what they did, they sold out. That's why we battling right now, our people being thrown out on the streets with these fake mortgages and everything else being profiled with these Europeans. They don't even know they're Europeans. They calling them Americans. Don't even know geography run around voting with European names and talking about freedoms and rights and marching and praying. 
You understand? Meanwhile, in secret, you can go right there in that lodge. Go right there in that lodge right there on Broad, Broad Street. These people don't think these people don't know what's up. They got carpet up there in the Morris room mm -hmm. with my eye. Wings on to cost more than your house. Got more Islam than you got. And they come out on the street, talk about that Christianity and everything else. They running you with your own stuff. Got a scimitar over the head of the Sphinx, which means the subjugation of the Moabite woman. And we've been going along with that crap. And that's what it's all about. Now that's just the real truth. And it's uncomfortable, it's still the real truth. Don't like it, it's still the truth. And if we were so right, we wouldn't still be screwed. You know, I want a sign of insanity. Keep doing the same thing, looking for a difference, and nothing changes, and you talking about you saved or you got it going on. You ain't got it going on. Our babies are dying younger and younger on the street. Our families are falling apart. Everybody comes here from any other country, make business immediately, and our people still getting screwed and lying to their babies, talking about how saved they are, and talking about how much Allah, Jesus, Muhammad they got. We're liars and we're hypocrites, and we need to stop it. Now, that's the truth. We need to start fixing something. You got some answers, you got some math, add it up. And if you don't add it up, get rid of it. Mm. It's what it is. Handle it. And that's the truth. Because that's how all of them get their degrees. And, the, and most of the followers don't even know fruition even exists. Never even heard of it. I'm an addict. I got fruition. Because that's how you get that degree. And them imams got it too. And them preachers got it too. And them rabbis got it too, because that's how they get their degrees. How come they ain't telling the believers? How come they ain't telling the followers? Because they're paying the bills and mopping the floors. Mm -hmm. While they got golden threads through their turbans and making deals with these Europeans, oil deals and land deals, while our people are suffering, acting like they're separate. They don't even need passports to go into the different countries. <laughs> Bush and, and Osama and them's family got a construction company together. They go bomb countries and then go build them up. They're attacking all the Muslim world right now to make sure that the Muslims don't get up again. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? That's the Treaty of Verona. And they're carrying it out. It ain't prejudice. It's the Treaty of Verona. And that's the basis of all the world's politics. And if you don't know what the basis of the politics are, you can't fix nothing. I don't care how emotional you are. And we cannot afford to be emotional. And we definitely can't put that on our babies. If they're going to take their places in the affairs of men, they're going to have to know real politics. Not what they think, not what they believe, they're going to have to go with what they know. Because the world operates on mathematics and on truth. It doesn't, it doesn't operate on your feelings and your beliefs. They pump beliefs for the basics. You understand what I'm saying? And they keep the people here in belief and faith. And the people don't even know the other four parts, the other five parts. They don't even know it exists. You ask the imam what this is, in secret, he'll tell you. Rabbi, he'll tell you. Shakum, he'll tell you. Adam, he'll tell you. Grand Sheik, tell you. Master Mason, tell you. Ku Klux Klan, tell you. DAR, tell you. Jesuit, tell you. How come all their followers don't know this? Don't even know this exists? Hmm? They don't even know what has the front, has the back. You tell them neophyte, they wouldn't even recognize it. I mean, they, they're familiar with scholar. They don't even know what neophyte is. You understand? They heard this before, but they don't know this goes with this. That's why when they do their rituals, they always have three candlesticks. There's the third rock from the sun. Shouldn't you know something about its rotation? Huh? Hmm? That's our that's our symbol, isn't it? Shouldn't people know that's moon and Venus? Shouldn't they know their rotations? Shouldn't they know their energies? Shouldn't they know how they move the tide? Shouldn't they know how we plant food according to that? That crescent of the star is not just there for us to, you know, mix a lot. It's for us to understand how this thing operates on the, on the earth. How it moves the womb of woman. How woman herself is the walking calendar. We don't need no written calendar. All we got to do is study woman. You got it all. But since they adopted that BS from the Christians, they've mixed it with Islam. Now we've lost the culture, but we got the rituals down pat. And they're ruling us. When we taught them. It's kind of arrogant for us to take a position like we superior, or we got some kind of power that we ain't got, and paying them taxes on our own land. Need a license on our own land to go across town and getting profiled anyway. <laughs> no, it's the real truth. You know, and for us to continue 
to give our children some kind of false hope or false security without really giving them truth, we're hypocrites. You know what I mean? People come from all around the world. They ain't subject to all that crap. Where can Islam, I, sis. Islam. Where can I um, read up more on fruition in the neophyte so I can understand it more? Oh, well, I'm giving you keys, but I'm, I'm actually, just like I read from the Book of the East, basically, before the, before the turnover, before the Europeans took over, mosques were universities. Now mosques, we just go read the Koran, mix a lot, feel good in general. It's not a put down, it's the truth. Before, you had mathematics, astrology, astronomy, anatomy, alchemy, um, cosmology, Gnostics, etc., which is really what Islam is, the science, the philosophy. Um, geometry, trigonometry, um, for instance, let me give you a, a key. You know how like when we look on the, the, um, the, the uh, ancient tablets of Hikupta, etc., and you, we always hear this term, you know, uh, our people need to know themselves or man know thyself. We throw that around, right? Throw it around loosely, right? And that's Islam, right? Now, I'll give you an example. We say that loosely and feel pretty comfortable. You know why we feel comfortable? No one ever usually challenges us and say, show the method. Then we'll start spewing philosophy without the science. Do, do you understand? Black and gold. Back. 